What is up, everybody? This is your boy Blue here at Blue Bears Games. We are bringing you another unboxing upgrade guide for a Commander Precon from Wizards of the Coast. And this week we are doing the Innistrad Crimson Val Spirit Squadron, or back in the day that, you know, there used to be a group in the WWF at the time called the Spirit Squad. Well, this is Spirit Squadron. So we're going to open this box up. We're going to see what's inside of it. And we're going to go from there. The only issue I have so far right now with Wizards of the Coast is that they're just pumping out so much product that it's like I only can do this type of video. So let's see what's in the box and we'll go from there. So far it's been, what, six weeks worth of this that I've had to go through just because of how many they're coming out with. And I understand that Crimson Val came out, like, because the Innistrad stuff was so close together on purpose. So here's what comes in the box. Obviously you've got the foil tokens. I'm going to guess that this is for any type of token that can be created. I don't know what those are for and then I don't know what that's for. And then of course you got that. But it comes in every single one of them so far. And here's the box that it comes in. Ooh, I got a damaged box, or at least put together wrong box. Uh, so that's what's on the box on the front, or the back, whatever you want to call it. Nothing special. And then my box, obviously, is not put together very well. So, yay me. Alright, and then, of course, we got the other stuff. Here's the life counter. Has a bat on the back, and then the symbol on the front. I like the colors. Nice blue and white. I, I actually like that color combination. Uh, spacer, which does nothing. The insert, which used to tell you how to play, how to play Commander. I'm not sure if it does that anymore. It just tells you a little bit about the deck now, and then, yeah, it doesn't really, it used to be like a small play mat or give you tints on how to play the game, blah, 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 it doesn't do that anymore, so. All right, and then finally, the, the, the most important part is the deck, so let's open it up and see what's inside of it. I'm going to go over, I'm going to show you what's inside, I'm not going to read off every card, I'm only going to stop every once in a while and show you, and of course, it's one of those where it's a pain in the butt to get open, and then I'll go into the upgrade guide, so. I'm going to split the deck up a little bit because it's a lot easier to hold the deck when it's split in half. And then we'll go from there. So, let me zoom in and I'll show you what we got. So, this deck is predicated on using Malician Restless Revenant as the main commander. A little too far. So, it is one blue, one white, five of any. Legendary Spirit Soldier. The first ability is this spell costs one less to cast for each spirit you control, which obviously this is going to be a spirit tribal deck. has flying. Most, most I say most spirits do. And then whenever Malician, the Restless Revenant, or another spirit token you control dies, or deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one spirit creature token with flying. In combat, if you have three deal damage, that's three tokens. Keep that in mind. That's actually not a bad. A little expensive for my taste, but I'm, I'm sure there's a way around that. Uh, the secondary, I believe this is the secondary. Is it partners? No, weird. Okay, so the secondary one they gave was actually not blue-white, which is weird. They usually give you a secondary commander in foil that's the colors. This one actually neuters the deck. So Donald Howard of Wings is a 4 cast 3-3 three, three human wizard. That's a weird... Why would they do that? Alright, anyway. Whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell with flying, you may copy... may copy it, except the copy is a 1-1 spirit in addition to its other types. Uh, do this only once each turn. So, I do a budget flying deck for commander. This guy actually would be pretty good to throw in there. So, those are the two commanders they give you, which is weird that the one is only blue. Alright, so then we go into the deck. Crush Contraband for artifact and enchantment removal. Custody Squire, Dark Steel Mutation. I've, I've touted how Dark Steel Mutation is pretty good as a commander killer. It literally makes their commander not killable and stuck as a 0 1 with no abilities. Field of Souls, that's actually a uh, throwback from the back in the day from Tempest, I believe. It's a pretty good card. <laughs> Ghostly Prison, Prevent from Attacking, Spectral Shepherd. Oh, if I'm going too fast, you can just pause the video as I go. If you can't read something, I'm not going to read every single one. Uh, Swords of Plowshares, or STP, great card from back in the day. Arcane Denial, Counter Magic from, I believe it was... Was it Alliances? I think it was Alliances. Distant Melody, another great addition. So you choose a creature type, draw a card for each creature you own. Or control, actually. Not own. <laughs> Nebelgast, Herald. So here's some of the spirits. Reconnaissance Mission helps you draw cards from when you're attacking. Uh, Sire of the Storm. Spectral Sailor, probably the best uh, spirit they've made in quite a while. It's a one that cast one flyer. So it's a flying man off the bat, but it has other abilities. It can add its flash, and you can draw cards with it. So <laughs> Drug Skull Captain of the spirits you control get plus one, plus one, and Hexproof. So always a bonus. Arcane Signet, like in every other commander deck, Azorius Locket, some Mana Rocks time, Azorius Signet, Commander Sphere, Marble Diamond, horrible Mana Rock, <laughs> Sky Diamond, another horrible one, Soul Ring, uh, some of the lands, Azorius Chancery, it's the bounce land, Command Tower should go in every deck, uh, Mirrored Landscape, especially in these colors, you don't have a lot of land fetching, so it's not a bad option, Path of Ancestry, I remember when this card was like an $8 card because it was only one commander precon ever, and that was it, it's a great card actually, especially in Tribal. Temple of the False God, horrible. A lot of people like to suggest that. I don't know why. Unclaimed Territory. 
kind of unnecessary in two color. I mean, I get why, so you can cast your spirits, but it's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, the only bonus for this is that it actually attached for colors, so you don't have to worry about it. But on the only time it attached for colors is when it's the creature type you chose. Uh, for some reason, a plane's in the middle of out of nowhere. All right, so we're in the rare section, so let's start working on them. So the first one is Rota Geist Avenger. Uh, four to cast legendary, 3-3, three, three, Vigilance. Uh, this is one of the partners. I wonder if the partner's underneath. There it is. So these are partners. Uh, as far as this goes, these can be a commander itself together as partner commanders. So that would make this deck still stay blue-white if you wanted to. You can sit here and read them all you want. I'm not going to read them off completely. You can read them and then pause it if I took too, was too fast. Uh, Drug Skull Reinforcements. Haunted Library. Whenever an opponent, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one and make a spirit token. That's actually pretty good. I like that card. All right. Priest of Blessed Graph. Uh, Storm of Souls. That one's pretty good, too. I wish it was a little cheaper. Sudden Salvation. Breath of the Sleepless. Ethereal Investigator. Haunting Limit Imitation. These are all the new ones, I believe. These are not reprints. <laughs> Occult Epiphany. I'm wondering, is this the thing? Yeah, draw cards and discard X cards. Create a 1-1 one -one for each. Okay, yeah, that's not what I thought it was. Ancestr or Spectral Arcanist. Disorder in the Court. Angel of Light Alabaster, this is a reprint. Benevolent Offering. Boreas, Char Boreas Charger, that's a reprint too, I think from Theros. Bygone Bishop, that's actually a pretty good one, uh, especially in this deck. It's a spirit, helps you investigate, which helps you draw cards, and that's white's weakness. The problem is that while white's weakness is draw, blue's isn't, so I don't know why they're trying it that way. Custody Soulbinders. Fell the Mighty. So board wipe for creatures that have a power greater than a specific target's power. Hallowed Spirit Keeper. <laughs> Hanged Executioner, that's a reprint. Actually, there's some combos with Hanged Executioner just repeatedly getting... No, wrong one. When Hanged Executioner enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one White Spirit too. Okay, so that's the, the Blink one. That's good in the Blink deck. Uh, Karmic Guide, that's the one that produces a lot of combos. You can do a lot of combos. So this one is Flying and Protection from Black. It's always great to have Protection from Black in the beginning. Uh, that stops targeted removal. That's what Black's the king of. It has Echo. Echo is 5, so it's 2 blue and 3, so the same casting cost it is. And then when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So here's where this is. In non-commander, when there's extra, when you have a, a deck with two of these, they can keep returning each other back and forth. So that's always nice. So you get enter the battlefield and dies triggers, because if you don't pay the Echo cost, it dies. So that's one of the ways you can do it. But there are other ways to use Karmic Guide as combos. So Katar's Wrath would wipe... Knight of the White Orchid helps you go get land. Mentor of the Meek helps you draw cards. Ayobi, who split the heavens. <coughs> uh, creates 3-3 three, three flying tokens, spirits specifically. Promise of Bunray. I actually don't know this one. When a creature you control dies, sacrifice it, and if you do create four sp spirit tokens. Not flying, which is weird. Okay. Remorseful Cleric. Uh, Twilight, Twilight Drover. I've been actually looking to get this card. Uh, I don't remember what this is from. I think it's from... I can't remember. Uh, he actually has ways that you can abuse him in other decks. So whenever a creature token you, you control... Or, I'm sorry. Just whenever a creature token leaves the battlefield, not even ones you control, put a plus one plus one counter on them, and then you can remove the a plus one plus one counter to create two of the one one white spirit creature tokens. There is a way to abuse him uh, with certain altars and stuff like that. And I'm sure I have in my upgrade guide reasons that that can work. So... Uh, continuing on, uh, Windborn Muse, I actually was looking for this, now they've reprinted it twice in Commander sets in recent year. Uh, it helps prevent people from attacking you, Flood of Tears returns everything to everybody's hands. <laughs> Ghostly Pilfer, one of the weaker of the options for a ghost, or a, a spirit that they could have chosen. He's okay. Imprisoned in the Moon, uh, it's a prison effect for your opponent's commander, you basically. Kami, this was a surprise that they reprinted Kami of the Crescent Moon, I didn't think they were going to do that. It's basically a Howling Moon on a stick. Uh, Midnight Clock, it's a, uh... It's a mana rock, but it also helps you... I think it's everybody. Uh, no, it's yours. So whenever there are 12 counters on it, when it strikes the 12th one, shuffle your hand, graveyard, and library, and draw 7 cards. So <laughs> it's just you. Uh, Rattle Chains. Shacklegeist. Supreme Phantom. So a good addition here. It's, it's always good to have a lord for the tribe that you're in. That's the second one. Verity Circle. Dovin Grand Arbiter. I'm going to leave this here for a second so you can read it. I'll read it along with you. Until end of turn, it's plus one is until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on him. Minus one. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying and you gain a life. And the ultimate is look at the top ten cards of your library. Put three of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. It's not bad. It's not spirit. Like, it doesn't do anything with spirits, but it does have 
the benefits of what blue and white want. So, Geist of St. Traft, I was actually kind of shocked that this is in a, a pre-con. This used to be, I think it was a $12 or $20 card back when it was first printed. <laughs> Exotic Orchard, like in every deck that's in, I don't know why it's in every deck. Moreland Haunt, Port Town, Prairie Stream, Skyclad Expanse, Temple of Enlightenment. And then, oh, there's just a random card in the back. So they really screwed up the order. I think that the Planes and the Mirror Entity that I saw earlier were swapped. Uh... It's a changeling. It's a 1-1, one, one, so basically it can be a spirit. And then it's on the turn creatures you control. Get power and toughness, X, X, and gain all creature types for X. So, And then I think now we're going to go. It's just all planes, all islands. This was put together weird. And then the thick... Let me see this. The thick... This is what they changed the oversized commander to in the product of this. It's just a thick version of militant. And then the token has got angel, spirit, and I think it's going to be mostly all angels and spirits. Oh yeah, thopter, spirit, spirits, copies, and then clues. So that's what's inside the box that you get when you open up the Spirit Squadron pre-con from Wizards of the Coast. It's not horrible, but I, I, I have a, a person that I saw earlier today before I started filming this that had said to basically that it's great as far as the idea, but the spirits that they chose are a little underwhelming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going into some upgrades you can do for this deck to make it just a little bit better, because while it's good, it's okay out of the box, it really does need some help. So let's get started with that, and as I always do, I'm going to start with the lands. All right, so when I mention lands, what I mean is by utility lands. We all know that we have to get in lands that are mana fixing, you know, the dual lands, the uh, fetch lands, and stuff like that. We get all that, and I won't be mentioning them going forward, as, as I just started a couple videos ago. We're going to just talk about the utility lands, so let's get started on that. Uh, up first, I'm going to mention Amiria Sky Ruin. So in a deck like this, you're going to have a lot of things die just because you can either sacrifice things like tokens. Obviously, they're not going to come back. But your main guys, all of your spirits, stuff like that, Amiria is going to let you get some of them back as long as you have enough planes in play. So it's always a great addition. There's Caracas, or Caracas, however you want to say it. Uh, that will return a legendary creature to its owner's hand. You can use it to save yours. You can also use it to bounce your opponents so that they have to keep casting it and don't get as much benefit out of it as, you know, they should. Uh, we got Castle of Antris, it'll help you scry through your deck, so it's just utility right there. Uh, we got Bonders Enclave, it'll help you, uh, with your with your commander out specifically, it's big enough that it'll trigger the Bonders Enclave, it'll help you draw cards. <laughs> uh, big one is Cavern of Souls, so you name spirits, obviously, and then all your spirits are uncounterable. It's always a great thing. I know you're in blue, but you don't have to play counter magic to be hateful to get towards counter magic. Uh, another one is Mutal Vault. Mutal Vault's actually one of my favorite cards in the game. It's a land that turns into a 2-2, or they call them main lands, and it, uh... It has every creature type, so it's always a spirit whenever it's the creature, amongst other things. Uh, so next, Reliquary Tower. Uh, a deck with blue in it usually needs some way that you don't have a maximum hand size. Reliquary Tower is the land way to do it. Rogue's Passage, if you want to just get combat damage through, Rogue's Passage is always a great addition. War Room, another card that will allow you to draw cards through the land, uh, as a land. Uh, the damage it does will be minimal because you're in two colors. I don't suggest War Room in three color decks just because then the damage starts to get a little too much. Uh, Wasteland, uh, I've mentioned it in many episodes before, but I always put some kind of a land destruction land in just because you never know what you're facing across the board and you might want to be able to take out something that is oppressive like, you know, a Cabal Coffers or a uh, uh, Phyrexian Tower, you know, a couple, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you might want to be able to take care of. Uh, what I have mentioned recently is Winding Canyons. It's only good in certain decks, specifically in Tribal or ones that rely on creatures for their stuff. Winding Canyons is an OG card from Weatherlight, I believe it was. Uh, for two and tap it, you can cast all your creatures at instant speed. They gain flash. Really good card. I wish I had kept them when I was younger. I, I didn't do creature decks back then, so I didn't care for them, so I traded them away. Now I do everything, and I wish I had kept them because, man, are they useful. And the final one I'm going to mention is Witch's Clinic. It gives your commander lifelink. I mean, you can always use life in, in commander, right? So... That is the section of lands I'm going to mention. For now, there are others, obviously, and, you know, you can let me know what ones you found. If you find any more that would fit nicely into here, in the comment section below. We're going to move on to the ramp now. All right, so everybody knows that green is the king of ramp as far as magic goes. However, a lot of people don't realize that white is second. Uh, it doesn't put everything into play, but it does allow you to mana fix better and go grab lands out of your deck, which a lot of other colors can't do at all. So we'll go over some of the white ones real quick, and then I'll tell you how else we're going to do some ramp in this deck. So <clears throat> up first, land tax. A uh, couple reasons. So I normally, I recently found that I don't like land tax in three plus color decks. I do like them in two color decks, though, especially in commander, just because no matter how many you know non basic lands you think you can get in a two color deck, there are just not as many as you think, and you're going to always end up with at least twenty basic lands. So that's where land tax shines is when it's at least twenty plus basic lands. So on top of that. 
I wanted to mention that it can synergize with a Mirror of the Sky Ruin by helping you go get the planes you need to actually have a Mirror of the Sky Ruin trigger. So it's a little double bonus right there. Uh, Tithe is another one. It's on the reserve list, unfortunately, and it's very expensive. It lets you go search for planes. You can go get up to two or three. I can't remember exactly what the number is, but it's way more than even a lot of green ramp spells do. Uh, Gift of the States, which was just printed or reprinted in Strixhaven as one of the Mystical Archives. That's always a great addition to a deck that doesn't, you know, especially blue-white does not have a lot of options. So you got to get it where you can. A new card that was just printed recently is Archaeomancer's Map. Uh, it lets you put lands into play if you're behind, which is what white does normally. I mean, I, I hate that that's all white could do as far as ramp is only do it when you're behind. Uh, but, I mean, in a four-player game, if you're playing up against a green player, most likely you're going to be behind somebody. So it's always a bonus there. And the rest of them are going to be Mana Rocks. And I'm going to choose... I mean, there were some in here already, which is great. I mean, obviously, a Soul Ring and a... And a uh, uh, Arcane Signets are always great. There's a couple more you could go with. I'll just go down the list real quick. They're all two casters, and they're all not tapped when they come into play. Uh, you've got a Felwar Stone. Uh, you've got a Fractured Power Stone. And for those of you that watched my previous video with the die rolling, it's always nice to add in extra little things. You never know when you're going to need it. That lets you roll a die. Uh, Liquid Metal Torque. In this deck, will actually do you a little bit uh, better. So Disenchanting Effects, so things that destroy artifacts, if you use Liquid Metal Torque. Uh, I mention this in red, all, red, all the time, red decks all the time because... It's the king of destroying artifacts. White is the secondary color for artifact destruction, and Liquid Metal Torque is a ramp for two, and then you can turn something into an artifact and destroy it, including your opponent's commander, so keep that in mind. Uh, Mind Stone and Prismatic Lens. Also, two to cast that don't come into play tap. You've got the Talisman that taps for red-blue, which is the Talisman of Progress. And then finally, you have what blue needs most of the time, which is, you know, not having a maximum hand size, so you have Thought Vessel. So those are just a few of the options for ramp that I can think off the top of my head to suggest for you all to put into a deck like this. So now we move on to the dudes. Alright, so for me personally, this is going to be the hardest section to get through for this video, just because a lot of the dudes or creatures, as I say, um, they're a little newer to the game, and with my MS, my short-term memory has been a little sketchy. I remember a lot of what the older cards do, so my memory here will probably make this, stam my, this section stammer a little, but hopefully I can get through it, so... We're going to go, and hopefully it works out. So we're going to start off with an Anaphanza Kintree Spirit. So that one's an interesting one. So whatever non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you bolster one. That's what that's what Anaphanza does. And bolster just means you choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, I mean, it's a good way to... It's a spirit. I believe it's two to cast. Uh, it's a spirit, so it gets the benefit of being a spirit in the deck. Uh, and then it also helps your spirits grow, so always a great addition. Uh, you have Cemetery Illuminator. And what Cemetery Illuminator does, it does, you know, s multiple things. So it enters battlefield or attacks. It has exile card from a graveyard. Always good in, in Commander to exile cards from graveyards, right? Uh, then you may look at the top card of your library at any time. Always a great ability because at least you know what's coming. And then once each turn, that also means your opponent's turns. So keep that in mind. You may cast a spell from the top of your library if it shares a card type with a card exiled with the Cemetery Illuminator. It's also a spirit. So the benefits that come from Cemetery Illuminator as far as a commander card are through the roof. So that's a great addition. It's a mythic, and I don't know what the price is going to settle at. So I just think it's worth it if you're going to play this deck. All right. Next, we're going to go with Edenic Pious. It's Apprentice and Apparition. It's a tool. It's a two-sided card, okay? The Apprentice part, it's okay. We're actually here for the for the flip part of it. Uh, it, it. Whatever one or more creatures are put in the graveyard from anywhere you investigate, always a good option to have draw options, especially, you know, extra ones. They're not actually there just to be a draw spell. That's always a good thing, right? But it has Disturb, so when it dies, you can disturb it out of your graveyard and put it into play. It becomes the Apparition, which is what you want because it's then a spirit. Uh, that one has whenever one or more creatures are put in your graveyard from anywhere you investigate. And then, obviously, that ability only triggers once each turn. But the downside is, is that, you know, things that have been disturbed, they're removed from the game once they die. So keep that in mind. So it's a good option. It, it, it helps you withdraw as a spirit itself. So always a great option. Uh, Eidolon of Countless Battles. So he makes it so that the creatures are bigger. He has Bestow. He is an enchantment aura. When he's bestowed, that gives everything plus one, plus one for each creature and aura you control. Aura enchantment. I can't remember. I keep forgetting which one it is. Either way, it's a buff. Oh, you know. Uh, and then when he, if, if the creature he's bestowed on dies, he falls off and he becomes a creature that is an XX creature where his power and toughness are equal to the amount of creatures and auras or enchantments that you own. Or you can just cast him as a creature and that's what his ability is anyway, so always a good option. Idle Line of Obstruction, uh, it's a good one because it, it's kind of a, a stacks is what they call it, a stacks, or something that taxes your opponent card. Uh, it has first strike, so it's, it's, it's able to survive combat if needed. And then it says loyalty abilities of your planeswalkers, your opponent's control costs one more colorless to activate. So they activate, they have to pay one to do it. Uh, so always good to have stacks features. What else we got here? Uh, oh, Facebound Judge. This one's going to take a second, so pull up a seat. 
All right, so Faithbound Judge, two-sided card. It has Disturb, so when the original one dies, it comes back. All right, let's explain how this one goes. It has Defender, Flying, and Vigilance. It has, at the beginning of your upkeep, if Faithbound Judge has two or fewer Judgment Counters on it, put a Judgment Counter on it. And then as long as it has three or more of those counters, it can attack, as long as it didn't have Defender. <laughs> then the Disturb part, say so when it's dead and it comes from your graveyard, it comes into play, but it comes into play as an Enchantment or a Cursing a opponent. And it has on it at that point, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a counter on it. And then if there are three or more counters on it, Judgment Counter specifically, by the way, uh, the Enchanted Player loses the game. So it's a, a Player Loses the Game style card on the back end. So always good to have that because if there's just this one person who's got a million life, sometimes you can just cheat them out of the game. All right. Uh, Kira the Great Glass Spinner. So there's been some chirping in the community since we're going back to Kamigawa next that this card will rise in price. It is one of my favorite cards in Magic as well. Uh, it's a spirit that says whenever any creature you control is a target of spell or ability, counter it. So basically, the reason why she's called the Great Glass Spinner, or at least this is where the term comes from, you have to break the glass. Every creature you control has a shield on it that's made of glass, and then it has to be broken before you can target that creature. So, great creature in my mind. I actually really love that creature. Uh, what have we got next here? We have Mirror Hall Mimic. Basically, it's the spirit version of a, of a clone. Always good to have extra so you can clone some, some Anthem-style creatures. Some of your lords, if you will. Uh, Patrician Geist. Alright, so... Patrician Geist is an Anthem creature. It buffs all of your spirits. But it also has a second ability that helps with your Disturb abilities. It makes uh, things that you catch from the graveyard cost one less. So, double good for this deck. So, definitely a nice addition. Uh, Selfless Spirit helps protect your creatures. I think it sacrifices the Indestructible. I believe that's what it is. Or protection from a card. I think it's Indestructible. Again, there's that pesky memory problem. Uh, Skyclave Apparition. Alright, let's talk about Skyclave Apparition real quick. Uh, let's see here. Oh, did I not put it down here? Let's not talk about Skyclave. Oh yeah, let's talk about Skyclave Apparition. Alright, I do remember this. So it comes into play, you exile a permanent on your opponent's side that's converted mana cost 4, or mana value, sorry, 4 or less, uh, until Skyclave Apparition leaves play, and then when Skyclave Apparition leaves play, they don't get the thing back, which is always great. They get a XX Spirit Token, I think it is. Where X is equal to the converted mana cost or mana value of the card that was exiled. So it's a good addition for removal. It's it's actually good uh commander removal. You can because it just goes back to it they weren't gonna get it back anyway. So it's a great target for the, your opponent. Uh, their commander's a great target because they're not gonna get it back anyway. They're gonna ooh, excuse me, cast it later anyway. So you're not really losing anything out of it. What else we got here? Spell Queller. Alright, Spell Queller, when it comes into play, it returns a spell to their owner's hand with converted mana cost 4 or less. It has Flash, so it can be basically a counter magic. It's not really counter magic, because they can just cast it again, either the set at the same turn or not, but it helps delay that spell, or at least it makes it cost more to cast. So, always a good option in a Spirit deck. It helps with tempo, alright? Or it helps your tempo versus your opponent. Uh, Voice of the Blessed. Let's do Voice of the Blessed. Uh, so, whenever you gain life, put a plus and plus and counter on it. When it has four of those counters, it gains Flying and Vigilance. And then as if it has ten or more, it has instruct, Indestructible. So if there are other ways to put counters on, it doesn't matter how the counters are put on it, it gains those abilities. So there are other things in here that give plus one, plus one counters. So there you go. Always a good option. Empyrean Eagle. Not really a Spirit Lord, per se. Per se. It is a Flying Creature Lord. However, most Spirits, not all, and not every one that I've suggested will have Flying, but most of the good ones have Flying. So it is a quasi Anthem effect lord, if you will. All right. Uh, Unsettled Mariner. So Unsettled Mariner basically is okay. So first things first is a changeling, which means it's a spirit because it has every ability or it's every creature type. Sorry. And then whenever you are permanent, you control becomes a target of a spell or ability. And opponent controls counter that spell unless they pay one. So more stacks effects, basically taxing your opponent. Great option. It is not technically a spirit, but it's changeling, so it's a spirit. Uh, and lastly, I have here is Metallic Mimic, and this is more like a. It is an Anthem or a Lord of Sorts. You, when it comes into play, you choose the creature type that you want it to be and it to buff. And whenever a creature of that type enters the battlefield, it gets an additional plus one, plus one counter. Meaning if it had zero counters, it now gets one. If it came into play with one counter, it comes into play with two, and so on and so on and so on. So, it's a quasi-lord. It doesn't do an overall buff. It's an individual buff in, in the form of counters. So, all great additions. So, that is the dudes, or the creatures, as you will. Uh, that I would suggest to put in here. Again, not all of them will fit your theme. Not all of them do you like. But, you know, they're just a couple suggestions. If you have any other ones that you think off the top... Like, these are all off the top of my head when I'm doing uh, writing down the video. Uh, but if you have any others that you can think of, go ahead and put them in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and discuss it. Uh, other than that, we're going to move on to the spells. So, let's do that. So, as far as the spells go, there's different 
I guess, subsections of things we're going to go with. So the first subsection we're going to go with is removal. Uh, why does the king of removal? There are many things that it can do as far as removing mass amounts of things. It can destroy lands, it can destroy artifacts, creatures. You know, it basically destroys everything. So we're going to start off with the creatures. Wrath of God effects, and that includes Wrath of God, but there are other effects like Supreme Verdict. It's the blue-white version. It can't be countered, and it just goes through. So it's it's a destroy all creatures thing. And since regeneration doesn't really exist anymore, uh, I mean, it's there, and we're in a, a format that can utilize regeneration. Most people don't. I mean, unless, I think Thrun is the only regenerating creature that most people use. Uh, you got Time Wipe as well. It's a blue-white one. Also, you can return a creature to your hand and then wipe the board. Uh, Austere Command lets you choose. I believe that's the one that says creatures that are converted mana cost three or less or four or more. Uh, you've got an... Uh, it's not really a board wipe, but a board clear, which is Cyclonic Rift. You overload it and everybody but you return stuff to their hand. Always a benefit. If you don't know about it, you should, but I'll have it out there for you to say. Uh, so targeted Removal. There's already an STP or Swords of Plow shares in here, so why not go and add something like a Path to Exile so you have more Targeted Removal. And then you had, I mentioned earlier with uh, Liquid Metal Torque, you have Disenchanting Effects. There was not a Disenchant style card really to speak of in here. Uh, so other than Disenchant, there's something like Abolish. Abolish lets you Disenchant something, and I'm going to say it that way just because it's Destroy Artifact or Enchantment. Uh, targeted Removal, and it does it for free, but you have to toss... I think it's toss a white card, so... Abolish is definitely an option, all right? You have Card Draw. This is another one of those... Uh, you know, subdivisions of spells that you can play. Card draw comes in many forms with blue. You have you know, the, the cantrip style stuff like Brainstorm. You have the X spell stuff like Blue Sun Zenith, which when you cast it, it shuffles into your library. Commander's Insight, which is a newer card from, uh, I think it was Commander 2020. I can't remember which one it came from, but it was brand new. It's, you know, I believe that one says you can draw X, and if you control your commander, you get both, which is the mill X cards of a person's library or something like that. Uh, and then the really big payoff here is that you're in blue-white, so Sphinx's Revelation. So it's two blue, white, and X, and you can draw X cards and gain X life, and life is a good resource in this version of Magic. All right? And then, lastly on the draw, we've got uh, a Seagate Restoration. So it's draw uh, cards equal to your hand size plus one, and then you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Here's the good thing about Seagate Restoration. That effect where you have no maximum hand size does not go away. They cannot, It cannot be removed from you. So for the rest of the game, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter what your hand size is. So really good option. Newer card from Zendikar Rising. Uh, let's see what else we have. We're in blue. Counter magic also comes into play, so counter spells, such as counter spell itself. But then you've got the good ones, and I say the good ones. Counter spell is a good one. Don't get me wrong, but there are upgraded versions to a counter spell. Not many, but there are a few, like mana drain, fierce guardianship, and force of will. The force of will and force fierce guardianship can be free. Uh, mana drain is actually a buff to your resources because whatever you counter, you get the uh, mana back. So, all good options for counter magic. You've got tutors as well. Blue and white have some pretty good ones. You've got mystical tutor that lets you go get an instant. Uh, I believe in a sorcery, but I can't remember. Uh, you've got Enlightened Tutor, lets you go get an artifact or enchantment, so you can find what you need. They put them on top of your library, though. you got Idealic Tutor, but that one lets you put one into your hand. I believe that's an artifact or enchantment. I can't remember which one it is, but I'll have it up there for you. Merchant Scroll lets you go get a blue instant or sorcery. And then Solve the Equation is new. It lets you just go get an instant or sorcery. So if you're looking for a draw spell, you can go find it easier. So all good options. Uh, and that's what we've got for the spells. Next, we're going to move on and go into the enchantment side of this deck. All right, so with enchantments, we're going to go rifle through this real quick. You've got Anointed Pro Procession. Obviously, it's one of White's better cards for Commander. So whenever you uh, have a token enter play, it doubled, just like Green has a lot of. Well, White has one, too. Uh, Kindred Discovery is a good one. So you would obviously choose Spirits for it, because you have to choose a, a creature type. And then whenever one enters the battlefield, or attacks, does not deal combat damage here, just attacks, you draw a card. Hence the reason why I, wanted, I would love that to go into a deck, with all those things that say you don't have a maximum hand size, that's the reason. Because if you're running a tribal deck of spirits, you're overrunning the board with things, you're going to have a lot of cards drawn in your hand with that out. So that's why why all the suggestions for no maximum hand size. Uh, reflections of the Jar. So again, you choose a creature type, obviously spirits in this case. And then what you're going to do is cast a good old spirit and then create a, copy it, basically. So always good. Especially nice when you can copy things like uh, Skyclave Apparition, where you can start removing people's things from their board. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Ristic Study. I know everybody groans when I say Ristic Study, but I mean, it's that good. All right. Favorable Winds is a buff for flying creatures, just like the Empyrean Eagle. You know, it depends on how many flyers you have in there. That can go, you know, same with the Empyrean Eagle. Both can either go or stay, depending on how many flying creatures you have. Spirit Bonds. Let's talk about Spirit Bonds for a second. So, let's see. It... So, blah, 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 blah. Helps you create spirit tokens, pretty much. There's a lot of things. I'm going to have it up there because that's just... It's a lot of wording. Basically, in essence, it helps you create spirit tokens. Lots of them. <laughs> uh, Coastal Piracy. They had in here something that does what Coastal Piracy does. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks... I think it's deal damage, actually. Deals combat damage to a player. You draw a card. Again, goes in the theme with, like, Thought Vessel and stuff that makes it so you don't have a maximum hand size. 
Uh, Court of Grace. Court of Grace. So Court of Grace gives you Monarch. And Monarch lets you draw a card if you're the mon but when you're the Monarch at the end of your turn you draw a card, so more card draw. And then it creates tokens and it creates spirits when you're not the Monarch and angels when you are. You obviously don't want to always be the Monarch just for the spirits, but let's just be honest, 4-4 four, four Flying Angels aren't anything to sneeze at for free anyway. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Rally the Ranks, it's an Anthem effect, so, you know, we need more Anthem-style stuff. It's not a, a Lord per se, but, I mean, it's an Anthem. You've got the classes. So I talk about this when I open my packs. I love the with classes. I love how that enchantment works, that style of enchantment. I really do think that was a great addition to uh, Magic in general. It does stuff that the color that it came from wants you, wants you to do. So we're going to start off with Cleric class. So if you want to gain life and put plus and plus and counters on things, you got that. And Paladin class. Uh, Wizard class, again, with the no maximum hand size, lets you draw cards, lets you put plus and plus and counters on things when you draw cards. Fits this deck to a T. And the last enchantment I'm going to mention, this is such an old card, from Invasion, I believe it was from. Uh, good luck finding it. It was not reprinted in anything other than that. To Fairy's Moat. You choose a color. Creatures of that color without flying can't attack. Simple, plain, clean. If you're playing flying, make everybody else, if they're not playing flying creatures, punish them. All right? So those are the enchantments that I've chosen to at least mention for upgrading this deck. If you have any questions or comments about those, go ahead, put them in the comments section, and we'll discuss it. But for now, I'm moving on to the artifacts. All right, so with the artifacts that I've chosen to at least present, we're going to go with two different themes. First one's going to be like tribal slash anthem artifacts. So I'll mention them all in a row. All right, so Vanquisher's Banner. I'll have it up there for you to see. It lets you draw cards, which is always a bonus. Herald's Horn, not so much a, a anthem. It doesn't give a buff, but it definitely gives, it makes it easier for you to get them in your hand. Uh, <laughs> one I've never mentioned in my life and probably will never mention again, Long Forgotten Gohei. Gohei. <laughs> it gives spirits plus one plus one. It also allows another ability that you're never going to use, but it, it basically gives spirits plus one plus one. Uh, Urza's Incubator. Uh, all tribal decks can use an in Urza's Incubator. It makes all creature spells of a... I think it's a chosen type, or just all creature spells you can you cast two less to cast. Uh, I'll have it up there for you. Uh, Obelisk of Erd gives things on your side plus two plus two. <laughs> More buffs. And Pyre of Heroes, it helps you search for ones you want. So situationally, you might need to sacrifice something that's not doing anything on the board. Say, like a token. And then a spirit token specifically, because they have to match creature types. But you sacrifice a, a spirit token. Go get a spirit, a non-token spirit out of your deck. Put it in your hand, and you can cast a situationally aware version of a spirit. Whichever one for the situation fits. So, great addition for any tribal deck. Have to mention it going forward. So, those are the... Tribal slash Anthem artifact. Let's go into some utility artifacts, alright? Obviously, we need to protect the commander, especially at that casting cost. I know it costs one less to cast for each spirit you control, but I mean, that, that could get really hard to start casting later in the game. Uh, so, Swift Foot Boots, you're going to protect it with something like that. You know, all the ones, all the equipments that do it. Uh, Biden of Thassa. So, the Biden lets you draw cards again. Uh, Sword of the Animus lets you go. Remember, we're not in green, so going to find lands is a, is a getting them out of your deck so that you don't draw them later is a key here. Sword of the Animus will help you do that. Uh, Soul Separator is an interesting one. I'm going to have that one up here so you can see exactly how it reads. But basically, anything in your graveyard, you can get two creatures out of it by exiling the creature and getting a 1-1 spirit copy version of it and then a zombie that is the power and toughness of it. But I'll have it up there so you can see how it's read. Great for creating a lot of different types of tokens and still getting double use out of your spirits. So, uh, Spear of Heliod, another just basic anthem. The, the bonus to Spear of Heliod, it's a legendary enchantment artifact that you can tap it and destroy a creature that has dealt damage to you. So, always good to have some extra little jabbing of creature removal. And then finally, Skull Clamp. You're creating lots of tokens. Uh, Skull Clamp lets you draw a lot of cards from tokens. Anything with the toughness, one. It gives plus one, minus one, and then if the creature that it's it's attached to dies, you draw two cards. God, is it good in a deck with lots of tokens. So those are a few of the artifacts that I'm going to go ahead and suggest, for now anyway, if we have any other discussions. If you want to talk about it, we can. But that's what I got for now. Next, we're going to go into Planeswalkers. So with Planeswalkers, it's hard to go through the Planeswalkers when you have blue involved because everybody goes, oh, you need all the Jaces. Listen, yes, I'm going to go a different direction. Yet a lot, Almost all the Jaces can work in some way, shape, or form for this deck, uh, but everybody plays them, and I wanted to go a little different direction. And I know that what direction I'm going to go into, people are going to say, oh, but everyone plays them too. But not really because mono blue versus blue white, obviously you know where I'm going with that, is Teferi. Uh, he doesn't get a lot of credit. I mean, recently he has just because they've made so many of them. Uh, but Jace is obviously the king of blue uh, planeswalkers, and I know you can use any Jace really if you want for card draw and utility. You got the Mind Sculptor, which does everything you want and more. Uh, let, that's tired. That's tired and, and boring. Let's go with Teferi's. All right. So start with Teferi here of Dominaria. Obviously, I'm going to have that up there, all of them up there for you to see. Uh, lots of abilities, lots of great 
utilitarian abilities for a deck like this, or any deck really, especially when they're blue-white, because that's the only way you can use them. Uh, you've got to fire the Time Reveler, also a nice addition, helps you. Uh, I believe the Time Reveler is the one that lets you cast sorceries as instance, always a good one. Uh, but also hinders your opponent from letting them cast anything during your turn. Or anybody else's turn, actually. And then you have the new one, who, the Teferi Who Slows the Sunset. I'll have each one of them up there. You can read each individual ability. If you have to pause the video to do so, please do so. They are really good additions to any deck that's blue-white. So I have to mention them. All right? You've got Narset, part of Veils as well. That's uh, damning to your opponent when they're doing lots of card draw. So if you're playing another blue opponent, Narset just kills them. Uh, here's a two-planeswalker uh, two combination I like to use for protection. It's not it, it's not foolproof. It is it has holes galore, but I just like doing it because it makes people have to think how to do it. Uh, Tell you the Shield Mage and the Wanderer. So one gives you hexproof, the other one makes it so that your other planeswalkers and creatures, non-combat damage does not hurt them. It's reduced to zero, so they can't just burn stuff off the board. It's just a fun little interaction to make people have to work around it. Alright? And then my final planeswalker suggestion. This is probably my favorite planeswalker in all of Magic. I did not own one until about three years ago when I did a con and traded away a really bad trade on my end. I traded away a beta Basalt Monolith for a bunch of cards. This was the main card I wanted, but there was a bunch of other stuff in there. But Tamiyo the Moon Sage, one of my favorite ones. It taps creatures, it lets you draw cards for tap creatures, and then that last ability, mwah, it's beautiful. Whenever something on your board dies or goes to the graveyard for any reason, it just comes back to your hand. God, is that lovely. Sacrificing things with that out... Oh, that's just beautiful. Anyway, that's my suggestions for Planeswalkers. Now, I did not mention anything that helps you sacrifice creatures in the artifact section that could go with Tamiyo because that is a sub-theme that you would have to decide on yourself. But if you do do that, there are plenty of altars you can use to sacrifice your creatures, so use your imagination. All right? And last but not least, we're going to go over the only combo I'm going to mention for this deck. All right, so the combo that I'm going to mention is the following three cards. I'm going to put them up here on the screen for you. Two of them came in the pre-con. So you just have to add a third card, all right? So the two that came in the, in the pre-con are uh, Karmic Guide and Mirror Entity, right? Good start. Because all you got to do now is add a Revel Arc to that. And now you've got a combo, all right? Now, I was going to sit here and describe every detail of how this combo works, but I've realized that it would take me so long to describe each intricate part of it. It is a combo. I'm going to put a link to this combo in the description of the video. I will mark it as Infinite Combo for this deck, all right? And you can go ahead and read it. It's a long article. I, I, I've known about this combo for a while. I just know that describing it takes so long to figure out how to do that I don't want to have to sit here and describe it because I stammer, stutter, and I have my MS. So it's easier if you read it at your own discretion. So I'm going to do that instead. So go to the link if you want to see the combo. It's going to be in the description. And we'll go from there. All right? If you have any questions about it, you can ask me. Send me a comment. Send me an email. Whatever have you. I will help you out with it. But it's probably best if somebody else describes it in writing rather than me trying to stammer through it as I try to give you all the details. So anyway, it's Revel Arc, Karmic Guide, and Mirror Entity. Three card combo, it's an infinite combo. If you do it right, they have it described there. I'm gonna send you to that website, all right? That is the only combo I'm gonna suggest just because this deck is purely just spirit tribal fun. There's no reason to, to mess with that whole spirit tribal fun thing. So that is it for this video, all right? So with that being done, this is where I go into my spiel. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to do me the favors of liking the video. If, uh, I put some, I put a lot of time into this one, especially just because I had to redo the whole video because I lost most of the information. I was in a flare when I did it, and I screwed it up. So, like the video, please. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. As of this filming, I believe I'm at 383. I'd like to get to 400 by the end of the month if possible. Uh, so please, do, the, do that favor. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff down the pipe coming, so there's no reason not to, all right? Uh, share the video out to anybody who, A, is looking to buy this video, uh, this deck and wants to see what's in it physically, not just the list. Uh, somebody who wants to do an upgrade guide to it. I see a lot of people bought this deck. Uh, it's a good deck, I'm not going to lie. I, I actually like it myself. It's spirits. I mean, I I've always liked blue-white. I've always been a blue-white control guy. So, since my early days of doing, you know, blue-white, Wrath of God, Counterspell, and Millstone. So, it's a good deck. So, share it to somebody who, who bought it and may want to see some things you can do to upgrade it. Uh, and, you know, or just share it out because you like my stuff and you want other people to like it too. That's a good reason too. So just do me that favor. That would be really, really appreciated, especially during the holiday season. People are busy and dead, but they're standing in line. They, they need something to watch. This is something they can watch. All right. Uh, other than that, uh, as far as this holiday season goes, I actually am selling a lot of the decks that come with my Blues Budget Battle Brew decks, uh, my Commander decks, 
all that stuff. So, you know, encourage people to buy from the small guy. Don't buy from the big guys because, I mean, they're already greedy, filthy, rich people, and I'm just a poor man who does this all by himself. So that would be greatly appreciated. I will have a link to my store on Facebook, which is where I've started selling the decks again. My store on Facebook where it was my personal store somehow screwed up, so now it's on the Facebook Marketplace. I'll put that link in the description as well so you can take a look at what I had to offer. Uh, or you can go to the Facebook page. Uh, so the Facebook page is BlueBearsGames.online on Facebook. Uh, there are several uh, posts that have decks for one for Commander, one for just regular 60 card deck for beginners who want to start learning how to play. Uh, you can look at the decks there, but then you can only purchase them on the marketplace. So just take a look. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, other than that, that is my time for the week. I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, I will be back again next week with the other deck that came out with uh, Crimson Val, the vampire one. That one's going to be short and sweet because I already have a vampire deck, so obviously the uh, upgrades are going to be easy. So I will see you then. Uh, until then, enjoy the holiday season, and I will see you there.